we are live. Fantastic. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Prayer Thursday, the 11th of February. Very cold, but quite sunny. It's rather nice at the moment. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Richard. How are you? I'm uh, keeping OK, thank you. In the, and uh, enjoying the getting more birds on the bird table at the moment because it's uh, not easy to find food elsewhere, mm. which is kind of nice. And... I don't know if you're 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 rejoicing at the at the demise of of Spurs five four last night, or, or whether you prefer them to a one. Not not too worried out of Everton and Tottenham, to be honest. But it was a good game. I've just seen the goals. <coughs> yeah, well, uh, we will see how all of that progresses. Uh, those of us who are into sport, uh, you have to do something between the cricket. O oh Lord, open our lips. Our mouth shall proclaim your praise. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we're gonna, we've got Psalm 37. Uh, it's a long psalm, so we're going to begin at verse 23. When your steps are guided by the Lord and you delight in his way, Though you stumble, you shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds you fast by the hand. I have been young and now I'm old, yet never have I seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging their bread. All the day long they are generous in lending and their children also shall be blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves the thing that is right and will not forsake his faithful ones. The unjust shall be destroyed forever, and the offspring of the wicked shall be rooted out. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks the thing that is right. The law of their God is in their heart and their footsteps shall not slide. The wicked spy on the righteous and seek occasion to slay them. The Lord will not leave them in their, la in their hand, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land, and when the wicked are uprooted, you shall see it. I myself have seen the wicked in great power and flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by and lo, they were gone. <clears throat> I sought them, but they could nowhere be found. Keep innocence and heed the thing that is right. For that will bring you peace at the last. But the sinners shall perish together and the posterity of the wicked shall be rooted out. Salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord shall stand by them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and shall save them because they have put their trust in him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 20, beginning at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been laid on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. 
Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. So we come to prayer this morning, and we thank the lord for our creation our preservation and all the blessings of this life but above all because of that love that he has for each one of us and we pray with saint paul that we might be able to grasp the what is the height and depth and length of the love of god all those dimensions of the love of god and to know that love that surpasses knowledge that we may be filled with all the fullness of god And we pray for Redditch and Bromsgrove that we might have a reawakening of the knowledge of God and of his love and of his nature and of his son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank the Lord that the uh, R rate uh, the infection rate in the West Midlands it has fallen and we acknowledge the fall in infection rate in Redditch and Bromsgrove through the period of the lockdown. We pray that the government will have great wisdom and guidance as to how we progress from here. We pray that we all know exactly when schools are to reconvene as full classes. We pray that we will know when lockdown restrictions can be eased and how. We pray that the Lord will help us in churches to decide when to meet and how often. We bring before the Lord the ongoing vaccination program we pray that all those who are over 70 who have thus far not received the vac vaccine will make themselves known and will receive it we especially lift before the lord those who have a negative mindset about the vaccine and are not prepared to try and receive the vaccine and we pray that the lord will speak 
to them and change their minds. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. Well, if before the Lord, those nations of the world that are really suffering at the moment, um, and especially today, we remember the nation of Mozambique with a collection of cyclones causing flooding in their midst. Uh, remember, it's much more difficult for international aid agencies uh, because of COVID. We bring before the Lord the nation of South Africa trying to work out the best way to vaccinate its people because they're afraid that the Oxford vaccine won't work as well as they had hoped. Um, but we pray that they will also listen to the World Health Organization advice so that people are protected in any possible way. We live before the Lord the challenge of the Southern Saharan region and particularly of Islamic terrorism, of abductions uh, that have taken place and massacres, especially in the Christian community. We pray that the Lord will speak into the hearts of people of violence. That those who would impose themselves and exploit will be held back. We bring before the Lord the ongoing conflict in Yemen. We pray that a path to peace will be found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We live before the Lord his church today. We pray the Lord's mighty blessing upon uh, Bishop John as he seeks to recover from his um, bad leg break. And we pray that he will be able to recover mobility and strength. We pray that Archdeacon Nikki will have complete use of her shoulder again. And we pray that the bishop's staff will be given great guidance uh, and encouragement and empowering as they look towards the future. We live before the Lord uh, today, especially the Flyfords family, as they call themselves in Grafton, Flyford, Abbotton, Flyford, Flavel, North Piddle and Norton Be Beauchamp or Beecham. We pray for all those seeking fresh opportunities for ministry, for those caring, supporting for those communities, for schools, businesses and community groups. And Lord Jesus Christ, lead and guide that area, not just to material prosperity, but to spiritual prosperity. We pray your mighty blessing upon Emma Goldby as she seeks to be a spiritual leader in their midst. We also bring before the Lord the Diocese of Ancole in Uganda, Bishop Sheldon. And in the aftermath of the controversial election there, we pray that that nation will know uh, ongoing peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So we lift ourselves before you today, Lord, and all the things that we have to do, and particularly for those people who are struggling to find positive things to do because it's freezing outside and in any case we're in a lockdown. We pray that the Lord will help them to have an unexpectedly special day. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And uh, thank you very, very much to, to Paul Irving. This is the last time I shall be doing morning prayer with Paul. Uh, next week... 
we will have a different lineup. So um, it's a bit like changing the DJs on Radio One, isn't it? Really, you know. I guess so. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so, so you'll you'll have to tune in next week to find out who. Good. Thank you, Richard. Uh, well, and uh, obviously we also, I hope we'll get the chance, Paul, before you go to say goodbye to your wonderful dog as well on Morning Prayer. Yeah, she's not here this morning, I'm afraid, but um, no doubt she'll make an appearance at some point. Anyway, well, go well. <laughs>